Welcome to Stitchery Stories, where textile artists share their life in fabric and thread. Inspiration, techniques, disasters and delights. And I'm Susan Weeks, enthusiastic embroiderer and textile arts dabbler who also loves podcasting. So take a break and enjoy our light-hearted chat and please share with your friends so they can enjoy it too. Hello and welcome to Stitchery Stories. Well, today I don't have a lovely guest for you. You've got me all to yourself because it's a special day. Well, actually, it's a special week. This is a special birthday episode. Yes, Stitchery Stories is two years old today. Way! Well, actually, our real birthday is the 19th of July, but that's a Friday. So I'm celebrating today because Wednesday is Stitchery Stories Day. So first of all, I want to thank, I want to thank you all. Thank you for listening. Thank you for sharing and spreading the word about the podcast. Thank you for your thoughtful messages of support and cheers. You know, they really, really do keep me going. And, and I love it when people say to me, oh, I, I was at a group last week and I was telling them all about Stitchery Stories or people will say to me, I was at a group last week and somebody told me all about Stitchery Stories and so I've started to listen. It really, really makes me so happy that um, you like it enough to share it with your friends. Thank you to my brave and enthusiastic guests, of course, who provide such endless inspiration and entertainment and a great deal of food for thought for us all. And every single one of them, this was the first time they've ever been a guest on a podcast. So they've all been very brave to step up and to to take part so well. And again to guests, thank you for trusting me. Thank you for trusting me with your words and your emotions and your images. And everybody, thank you for suggesting guests. Thank you for offering to be a guest. And thank you for agreeing to be a guest. Because, well, you know, without great guests and, and a great audience, then, well, really, this would be a pretty dull place. No, don't worry. I'm not going to ramble on for 40 minutes on my own. But I did want to mark and celebrate our achievements in some way. And, well, this seemed like a, 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 the only way I could do it. Anyway, what I would really like to do is ask you a couple of questions And I wanted to share a bit of the backstory as to why I created this podcast. And, 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 you know, the other thing that I want to share with you is some of the unexpected impact that this podcast has had. Well, if you've listened for a while, then you know I have an established structure for the show. I ask the same questions and we kind of weave them through. And no matter what kind of daft things we start chatting about. I always come back to those key questions. So today I'm going to follow that as a way to organise my own thoughts and celebrations today and give you some kind of idea of what will be coming. So my first question therefore to myself is, well Susan, what are you working on and what has got you excited? So Obviously, I'm so excited about reaching the two-year mark with Stitchery Stories. You know, I quietly launched after roping in, literally, three local friends from Yorkshire who I thought would be really great guests. So a thank you, a massive thank you to Alison and Jane and Susie for getting the ball rolling, for putting up with my mad idea. And I even said to loads of my friends that, you know what, I wasn't even sure if anyone would be interested in listening. Of course, they all, all laugh at that now and, and, and point it out to me on a regular occurrence. Well, so you thought nobody would be interested. I mean, I was really excited when it started to take off. And, and then even within a month or so, I, I had attracted an audience from around the world. Like, how amazing is that? I was always utterly amazed by that. At the moment, we're just short of 80,000 downloads. So that's 80,000 times somebody has decided that they want to listen to an episode of Stitchery Stories. Oh, as one friend put it to me a couple of months ago, wow, that's like stepping onto the stage at a rock concert or two and shouting, hello Wembley, or wherever you choose to be for your concerts. And that for me really opened my eyes to, to what 
I'd actually achieved. Wow. And as for what I'm working on, well, I want to start with you, dear listeners. That's what they talk about in radio, isn't it, dear listeners? What else can I do to help you? Why am I asking that? Well, one of the unexpected impacts of doing this podcast is that I get all sorts of messages from people asking advice. Advice around online marketing and running a freelance business. And and typically as a response when I've had, you know, a fascinating discussion with one of my guests around those kind of issues. I mean, for those of you running a business around your creative endeavours, is there anything else I can do to help? Set up a group, run mastermind sessions, provide online training. How about some sort of conference or live event? I mean, there's, there's all sorts of people out there in Facebook and in the internet in general, but is there anything that you feel is missing out of your life that possibly we could do via, via this medium or, or, or via me? You know, as you know, I do have a combination of very relevant skills. I'm self-employed. I've specialised in digital marketing for for the last 10 years. I've been a mentor for virtual assistants and freelancers in an online training community through freelanceu.com. And I also provide training for them and in a variety of online tools and technologies. I'm very involved in the Embroiderers Guild. And of course, I love dabbling in textile art and embroidery when I escape from my computer. So... Even if you've got other online gurus out there touting their wares, perhaps you would think there's things that I could help you with which you would prefer to do with me than some faceless person on the internet. Anyway, if any of this sounds interesting, then, you know, let's have a discussion. There's the Stitchery Stories Facebook page. Um, you know, I'd love to hear from you. Drop me an email. Hello at stitcherystories.com. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to hear your ideas and any way that I can help. I love to help if I can. Now, I will also be sending out a couple of surveys over the next few weeks because I would really appreciate it if you would spend a couple of minutes to let me know what you think. So these are like audience surveys, really. Now, I want to keep Stitchery Stories interesting and, and entertaining for you all. We need to... You know, sometimes we need to look at, do we need to, what do, what do we need to change? What do we need to move forward with? So that's, that's what's um, got me excited at the moment and what I'm working on. Well, then I usually move on to how did my guest get into textile art and embroidery and get a bit of a story? Well, my version for today, why, why did I start this podcast? Why on earth did I start this podcast? Well, I had decided from a business point of view to focus on really narrow my attention to helping wannabe podcasters to launch and run a podcast. I had been supporting people in podcasting for a number of years. I actually supported a cosmetic surgery podcast for ooh, well over five years. So I'm also, you know, quite an expert on cosmetic surgery, but you didn't know that, did you? <laughs> anyway. I really wanted to help people set up and run podcasts, get the strategy and organisation done properly, get all the technical aspects set up and working properly, provide support to keep them going. But to add credibility and, well, to provide a case study that didn't involve clients, I wanted to run my own podcast rather than only supporting others. Well, you know, over a few months I thought about it, various ideas came and went, but then I decided that, do you know what, I wanted it to be a fun addition to my life too, because I knew, I knew it would take a lot of time and effort and, well, of course, money. So it might as well be fun. I did research and then realised that actually there weren't really any podcasts around textile art and embroidery. Plenty on knitting and crochet, quite a few on quilting and sewing and, you know, even some American ones. I know that sounds awful, doesn't it? But what I'm getting at, there was nothing based in the UK, which I felt was a really great opportunity. Here was my opportunity. Go with it, Sue. Of course, I had no audience whatsoever in textile art and embroidery. So I would be starting totally from scratch and growing an audience. But do you know what? That was also a part of the appeal. 
part of the appeal from a professional credibility point of view as well. And, you know, using Facebook and Instagram, I'm really, really pleased about how my audience has grown and how much you've all enjoyed listening and sharing. What have been the highlights? What have been my high points so far? Well, can I get some numbers off my chest first? Well, you know, within podcasting, the main charts are those compiled by Apple. Since they have historically been the foremost place where people went to listen to podcasts through their technology, iPods, yeah, the iPads, their iPhones. It's always been a a very strong podcast listening group. Now, People could listen through iTunes, as it used to be called, and now they call it Apple Podcasts. And there are plenty of other places to listen to podcasts, but Apple's chart is still the one with the most importance, rightly or wrongly. It's still the ones that people go on about. Well, do you know what? Almost since launch, Stitchery Stories has appeared in the top 200 visual arts section of the iTunes chart, usually hovering around the 100 position starting out in the UK chart and then also appeared in national charts all over the world as word spread. I think the highest I ever caught myself was about position four and I was doing better than some famous BBC podcasts at the time. So I was absolutely over the moon. Of course, you have to catch it. You know, these charts just change all the time. So, you know, you you, you, you might be number four for 15 minutes, but hey, hey, ho, we all have our 15 minutes of fame, don't we? So again, this is testament to all you lovely listeners sharing with your global stitchery friends. So yeah, thank you. Thank you once again. Now, you might be thinking, well, uh, well so what, Sue? <laughs> well, do you know what? There are, there are around 700,000 published podcasts and there's hundreds being created every day, literally every day. There's hundreds of new ones come out. But many, many podcasts never get anywhere near the charts, let alone into them on a regular basis. And they never gain any traction and they never build an audience who loves to listen to their podcast. So they're slaving away, creating a podcast that is really hard for people to discover and listen to. So I feel really blessed that a combination of all sorts of things has led to the fact that people listen and embrace this podcast and each episode when I go and look at the stats and little graphs and things then each episode has around a thousand downloads some slightly less quite a few significantly more but let's say each episode has around a thousand downloads even those early ones now I know for a fact that when those early ones came out they had nowhere near a thousand downloads so what that's telling me is that Each episode has consistently a thousand downloads. So I've got a consistent audience there. And that once somebody finds an episode of Stitchery Stories, then they do go and listen to all the other ones as well. So binge listening is a thing, really is. So the numbers tell me that. You also tell me that too. That's a very frequent message I get. So for me personally, this is a massive highlight to be doing so well in those charts. I've really enjoyed chatting with so many lovely guests, making new friends, helping more of the world discover their fabulous artwork. Many guests get in touch with me afterwards to tell me that their audience has grown, they've got more website visitors, their social media followers has grown, they've had more email subscribers, sold more stuff, kits, whatever, booked more workshops and their workshops are sold out. That makes me so, so happy. It makes me so happy to hear how much impact this has had on my guests. So that's another massive highlight for me is to have been able to help my guests. And for unimagined impact, wow, those messages that turn up out of the blue. I get emails, I get messages in Instagram, I get messages in Facebook. It's just amazing. Here's one. So last year, of course, as I, as I might have mentioned, uh, about kind of May or June, I had a couple of guests cancel for various reasons. And then I just got really busy. And then it was the summer holidays. And, and I just didn't put any episodes out, did I? Um, I just vanished. 
And then I felt guilty about three or four weeks later when I started getting this trickle and then a stream of steady emails saying, hey, Sue, are you OK? I haven't heard from you for ages. We were just wondering what's happening. So here was one. Dear Sue, I've only recently started listening to the Stitchery Stories podcast and I've been working my way through some of the past podcasts. Thank you so much. They're fab. I too have missed your updates and the new episodes arriving on my iPod. I don't know you, but you've become a familiar voice in my life and I just hope that all was well with you. Enjoy the summer break. You'll be missed, but luckily I've still got some past podcasts to enjoy. So that was a lovely one. I got loads like that asking me if I was okay because I hadn't done any episodes for ages and they were missing me. It made me feel guilty. <laughs> uh, and how about this one? Uh, oh, this, this makes me cry. This was an Instagram post from a lady. I'm sat stitching on Sunday with mum. She was on the crochet and I was on the embroidery. We were tuned into Stitchery Stories, which she loves. The macular degeneration has prevented her from being able to embroider for many years now, but she was a member of the Embroider Guild for 25 years and dearly misses her time there, but has found a real connection again with embroidery, with the podcast. Thank you, Susan. I won't go on. I've got loads of similar messages, from, some from people recovering from illness who love to listen, and in all sorts of different situations. All wonderful, all gratifying that my efforts have made a difference to people's lives. When I started this, I, I never expected any of that. Anyway, so from highlights then we move on to disasters, don't we? So anyway, here's, here's a quick one about disasters for you. Well, of course, I record all of my guest interviews via the internet and as such, things do go wrong. One of my early ones, oh, dearie me, it was in my lovely chat with Sue Stone. And so imagine my horror and despair when I realised that something had gone horribly wrong and nothing had been recorded. Oh, I felt sick. Oh, and that was even despite the little thing saying, flash is red, yes, I'm recording. You can see it's recording. It told me it was recording. It didn't damn well record. Ah! Ah! Anyway, so I had to um, eat humble pie and get back in touch with Sue, who was exceptionally busy at the time. Well, she's always very busy. And, um, and anyway, Sue graciously did it again. So again, I was very grateful for Sue and her understanding with that. Well, she's, her sons are involved in um, a lot of tech project so she said yeah it's happened to them before as well so I was like oh phew it's not just me um somebody else I had to cancel at the very last minute because we had a massive thunderstorm crashing around overhead you know my office is in the conservatory so the hailstones on the roof make it a really dreadful place to record anything to, you know, tooth be known various other mishaps along the way as well but as I always say to my guests this isn't the BBC don't worry you're just chatting to me. We're having a friendly chat and all will be well. Anyway, my editing skills are pretty good these days, so no worries there. Unfinished objects? Well, you can't really have unfinished podcast episodes because otherwise you wouldn't have a podcast, would you? So I'll, um, I, there's nothing really to add on there. Let's not go there, however, with the pile of UFOs that I have lurking around in plastic bags. Yes. I have pigs, projects in grocery sacks. But what I would like to say is to move on and to wrap up today. I've rambled on enough, I think. So I want to wrap up today with what does the future hold for Stitchery Stories? Well, it's my intention to keep going. I love doing it. I enjoy it and I know you enjoy listening to it too. And as I said, I will be sending out an audience survey, which I hope you will spare me a couple of minutes to tick a few boxes. I have one last favour, if you would indulge me on this one, please. As I mentioned earlier, creating this podcast and, and keeping it going does take a huge amount of time and effort and therefore money. As you know, I did drop from doing weekly to doing fortnightly episodes, so I would have more income generating work time available to me. And I would like to get back to weekly, actually. It flows better. But as a future project, I am investigating how I can generate revenue from this podcast. So it becomes more self-sustaining. I, mean, I have plenty of ideas that have worked for other podcasts too, you know, such as selling 
stitchery stories, stuff or merch as they call it these days. Or maybe having some recommended suppliers who sponsor the show or episodes. You know, I know some artists run a patronage patronage scheme through something like Patreon, you know, where kind people donate a regular amount. Um, artists, you know, that platform has been set up for creatives, artists, podcasters. So, and of course, as a background to that, many people are, are very happy to pay money every month for their entertainment. Movies, music, books, audio books and so forth. None of them are free these days, are they? Our entertainment is not free. And so, therefore, those people may be willing to include supporting an enjoyable podcast too in amongst all of those things. Anyway, all just ideas floating around. But again, I am interested in your thoughts. Please let me know what you think to any of these ideas, good, bad or indifferent. And then, of course, there's always the old chestnut of advertising. Now, I would never have any any old random adverts interrupting my guests and the, the, the amusing stories and the, the brilliant advice that they share. But what does work well on other podcasts is adverts that are read out by the host on relevant things that the audience would be interested in hearing about. So that, that might be something that worth trying. So anyway, as, as a f- my future project, then I am going to try a few things out. So watch out. <laughs> and, um, you know, there were maybe different things popping up and I might be asking you about different things as well. But, you know, let's see if anything works to generate some revenue to, to keep this going and to, to help make it sustainable for me. Anyway, just to wrap up, my son, crikey, he's nearly 14. He breaks up for the, sorry, he's nearly 15. What am I saying? Um, He breaks up for school holidays on Friday. And I do want to escape my office and microphone and spend some time with him, of course. And do you know what? Actually get some textile art done instead of just chatting about it all the time. That would be nice. So Stitchery Stories will be on summer holidays again, but this time I'm actually letting you know it's happening. And I will be back in September. Of course, I will still be doing some work because I've got guests to sort out and I've got more episodes to record for you. So again, if you fancy being a guest, the more the merrier. Drop me an email. Um, Love, I love, love, love speaking to you. Please don't think that you've got to be, in quotes, famous. That's nothing to do with it at all. Anyone with a fascinating story, I love, love, love to speak to you. Anyway, I hope you have found this behind the scenes glimpse into my podcasting world interesting, um, that you didn't mind my um, apparent indulgence in in celebrating in this way and that you have enjoyed and will enjoy celebrating with me that Stitchery Stories is two years old this week. Woohoo! Have a lovely summer and I'll be back in September with more Stitchery Stories. Bye. If you enjoyed this episode and want to hear more, then please join the Stitchery Stories fan club so you can get an email when a new episode is released. It's a quick and easy way of listening and of keeping up with any news and information around this podcast. Please visit stitcherystories.com. Of course, you can listen to Stitchery Stories on plenty of podcast apps at Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify and plenty more besides. You can also ask your smart speaker to play Stitchery Stories podcast too. But wherever you listen, why not leave us a rating and a review to encourage other people to listen too. I very much appreciate you taking the time to do that for me. So that is the end of our Stitchery Story for today. Keep stitching, keep smiling and keep creating your very own Stitchery Stories.